ESPN Blacksburg is W226 AT Christiansburg, WPIN AM Dublin, and W246 CR Christiansburg. It's the Drive Sports Center at the top of the hour. Eric Reed is finally back in the NFL. Reed, the safety you joined Colin Kaepernick in accusing the NFL owners of conclusion when neither of them could find a job after protesting during the national anthem when they were 49er teammates, signed with the Carolina Panthers today. The Ryder Cup begins tomorrow, and as tradition, it begins with the Team Four Balls, where two members from Team USA face off with two members from Team Europe in match play, where all four goggles play their own ball throughout the round. Rather than alternating shots, each hole is won by the team whose member has the lowest score. All times for these matches will be Eastern Time as I announce them. Match 1 will be at 2.10 a.m. Tony Finau and Brooks Kafka versus Justin Rhodes and John Rahm. Match 2 at 2.25 a.m. will be Ricky Fowler and Dustin Johnson versus Roy McIlroy and Taborgan Olsen. Match 3 at 2.40 a.m. will be Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas versus Paul Casey and Tyrell Halton. And match four at 2.55 a.m. will be Tiger Woods and Patrick Reed versus Francisco Molinari and Tommy Fleetwood. Head coach Justin Fuente announced Tuesday that punter Oscar Bradburn will wear the Frank Beamer number 25 jersey for Genie Tech's game at Duke on Saturday. It will mark the second time that he has earned this honor wearing the Beamer's number 25 jersey. He will also wear wore it in a 59-7 victory last season against the University of North Kakalaka. For ESPN Sports Center, I'm Trey Lyle. It's time now for The Drive. Oh, righty then. On ESPN Blacksburg, 93.1, 97.1, and live on the web at ESPNBlacksburg.com. It's The Drive on your local radio station. We are ESPN Blacksburg, and a good Thursday afternoon to all of you. My name is Paul Van Wagner. Trey Lyle is making noise in the other studio. You can call him if you want at 866-961-1430. 866-961-1430 is the number to call. You can also text us. The number is exactly the same. It is 866-961-1430. Can't keep my eyes to myself. <laughs> no matter how hard I'm trying to. Scott Nason. I won't Scott. Call to myself. Scott, 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 Scott Nason. Scott. <laughs> I love Scott. Like a love song, baby. <laughs> Scott Nason. Scott Nason. Scott Nason. Scott Nason. Absolutely. Let's go. Scott Nason joining us today. How are you, my friend? Where, where's Scott, Trey? He was. What'd you do? Where, where's doing he? Doing wonderful. Oh! oh very chilly, windy, uh, apparently affecting the phone line what? day here in northern Michigan. What Ready to talk world? sports with you guys, my friend. What in the world? Now you've thrown it off. Doubt I, me. I, 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 Doubt me. I apologize to you, Trey. You actually finally got something right. Good job. I've always been. Do- I'm perfect. <laughs> Scott, and, I, and I, Paul, Paul yes, I apologize. Yes. I didn't realize the, the senator yielded my time. So oh, I, I didn't realize oh. I had time there, so thank it's, you. It's no, no. all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Uh, I, I I want to start out with I am very upset with you, Scott Nason. Um, you didn't get you didn't find my high school yearbook, did you? No, but what I will okay. say is last week, Scott. Last week, give him time. It's going to get better, Trey. Last week. During our eliminator picks, which we will make at the end of this segment, <laughs> I began to allude to making an outlandish pick, and and Scott interjected himself and and swayed me to to not make that pick to go the other direction. And had I actually made that pick, Scott Nason, the Detroit Lions would have lost and been on their way to zero and sixteen again. But they won instead. And uh, are you uh, are you now officially back on the Lions bandwagon? Um, no, I'm not. Okay, uh, because I've seen this before. Being a longtime suffering Lions fan, now I am happy that both those things happened. No offense, but I was a game behind you, so <laughs> that helped me in that regard. And the Lions finally got a victory and looked like a complete team. But and I put the uh, butt in italicized bold, eighteen fonts, whatever you want to say it. We've seen this before with the Detroit Lions, yeah. and if they can put together back to back weeks 
like we saw on Sunday night against the Dallas team. That's pretty ripe for the picking. Yes. Then I'll start to get a little excited. But, hey, a win's a win, and I'll take it as a Lions fan. We talked about this uh, here at the beginning of the show, and, and, and I want to get your take on this. Uh, we've got a really, really, really good game on paper tonight, but the Thursday night games have been not exactly delivering uh, over the course of the Thursday night history here in the NFL. Uh, This game, again, on paper, high-powered Rams offense faces the stingy Vikings defense. The Rams defense is pretty decent. The Vikings offense, not too bad. Can we get a good game here, Scott? You know, Paul, I don't know. Um, The way this one shapes up, I mean, the Rams and Chiefs right now look like the best two teams in the NFL after three weeks as far as how they are playing. And, you know, a short week for both these teams, but more Minnesota after that shellacking at home against Buffalo. I think there's a couple other eliminator picks Mm -hmm. gone Mm -hmm. the wrong way. Having a short week, having to travel out west, never a good combination Mm -hmm. for the Central Eastern teams on a short week, they have to go to the West Coast. They have enough trouble going to the West Coast during a long week. I like the Rams in this one, and I agree. I don't think it's going to be a very close game. I like the Rams a lot in this one. Rams are double-digit favorites, uh, and if they win by double digits and go 4-0, and they will join a group that uh, since, I want to say it's 1995, I believe. I'll have to find that information again. Uh, but that that group has gone to or won the Super Bowl if you start out 4-0 and and you win all four games by double digits, you're almost a lock to go to the Super Bowl. If that does happen, Scott Nason, are you penciling the Rams in to be your Super Bowl team in the NFC? Right now, penciling yes, penning in no. Okay. Um, defense might be the Achilles heel for this team, which was looking pretty good after last week, and they lost a couple of their our cornerbacks, uh, Marcus Peters and Akib Kaleeb. I think Kaleeb is out of the game, uh, definitely. I'm not sure about Peters. And they're going to need Jared Goff to do what he did last week against the Chargers, uh, pass the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, you have Todd Gurley, but looks like the Rams, if they're going to win, they're going to have to score a lot of points. So far, so good. And you look at the NFC as a whole, right now, they look like the best team. Don't know really who's the second best team at this point. Right now, the Rams are definitely top of the crop, but again, it's only been three weeks. Rams, Kansas City in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes rolling. Do you think that that is a possibility? I think it's a definite possibility right now. I mean, nobody has ever done what Mahomes has done in the first three games. Uh, Throw 13 touchdowns. And, you know, he didn't have any in the second half. I mean, they kind of had that game salted away. Uh, Let San Francisco back in in a bit, Mm -hmm. but... Right now, Kansas City is doing what a lot of people thought they would with Mahomes. Maybe not tons of people, but I think they had a reason to get rid of a pretty good Alex Smith and to, you know, put their hopes on this kid who sat out last year. And, you know, you look at all these young quarterbacks now that are getting their opportunity, pretty much all of them except in Baltimore at this point because of Flacco. Uh, you know, it's working in Kansas City. You got those wide receivers, you got a running back. Defense, again, may be the Achilles heel of Kansas City, not the the, the flashiest defense. They do give up points, but Kansas City, Los Angeles Rams, at least after three weeks, looks like the odds-on favorite at this point. Yeah, I was about to ask you, Scott, a lot of faith in this offense, but do you think they can overcome, you know, a defense that allowed 28 to the Chargers, 37 to the Steelers, and another 27 to the 49ers in a game where Jimmy Garoppolo only played about half a game? Yeah, and that's the big question for Kansas City. And they're going to play better teams as the season goes along. It doesn't look like the AFC West is especially strong. Uh, Denver was a little exposed at Baltimore after starting 2-0. and And the AFC right now is, is, is kind of tr- trying to find their uh, shape as far as teams that we thought might be up there. New England, obviously, the biggest one at 1-2. and two. they got a whole bunch of issues on both sides of the ball. Uh, Pittsburgh, a big win on Monday night. I would expect them to get up there a little bit, but they have a suspect defense. How about Miami? The other 3-0 and team, not a whole lot of people are talking about them. they got to go to New England on Sunday. That's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. But yeah, Kansas City's defense, definitely a question mark, but when your offense is rolling like it is right now, uh, not as much a question mark as you might think. Tom Brady, 27-1 and against uh, teams in his division at home uh, since, 19, or since 2007, Scott. I feel pretty good that that is going to be my eliminator pick. 
the Patriots. Yeah, I can't pick. I oh, that's that right. I Paul. I mean, yeah. obviously, New England was outside, or I should say they were without uh, quite a few players. I mean, I think they only had three wide receivers. Uh, you're probably going to see some uh, guys back in the lineup, and I don't think you're going to see the same sort of results as they had in Detroit. I would expect New England to win that game. I don't know if they're going to blow out Miami, but I just don't see Miami going 4-0 right I, I, now. I have Michigan-related news that oh. just broke. Oh, okay. The fear is that Broncos tight end Jake Butt has torn ACL in a non-contact injury today. That, Be- best name in all of football. Yes, best name in all of football. I just love the fact that he there. got a, um, a toilet paper, like, um, deal right after. Oh, like comes. how they send yeah. like all the player skittles. He got he got toilet paper. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like we'll Charmin sponsored him. Like he's one of the like sponsors. Yeah, sorry. So I'm you, go, come, come, come looking for a word. There, I'm getting Trey? ready. I'm getting ready for my eliminator pick. I have to. No. Trey just made me more angry with you, Scott, when he just informed me that I can't pick the Patriots. He cannot. <laughs> that's right. You picked them last week. You got rid of the Patriots. <sighs> Ooh, uh, and I think a, now was, I think now is the official time for my my crowning of king of the first part of this game. You're uh, not. I have lasted the longest. You I mean, have. I, I, yeah. So I, I won the first like, part of the here's game. Here's the thing. I'm on a like if we we'll go with longest streak, staying alive. So uh, okay, Trey, right Trey's now, changing four. the rules. Okay, yes, because I've won. And how yeah. many yeah. times? Are we okay. He's he's right. He did. He's, like, he's we, we the, said the there only were two one that hasn't was, been eliminated. Was, it was won, overall yep. overall record. And yeah, I'm going for the overall. The, the All right, we, the we can add a third part. This of the is what game my life has become, Scott. Well, we'll just keep listen, right listening here. to these two idiots <laughs> argue while I just sit here and stare at them. Congratulations, Andrew. You won. All it's right. like Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. As a exactly. Redskins fan, this is his only hope this year. <laughs> All right, so we've got J.W.'s pick already in, so so we'll what make sure we use that. It's on the text line. We don't want to give it away yet. Just, just. Oh, all right, all right. Got so, it. so we've got JW's pick in. Uh, I, I do have, I do have one more, I do have one more NFL related thing for uh, for Scott Nason, and, and you kind of alluded to this uh, earlier, Scott, uh, when we talked about the Lions. They take on the Cowboys, averaging thirteen point seven points per game, fewest in the league. This is a team that we wondered when they lost all of their receiving weapons this year due to retirement and free agency and, and cutting guys and whatever it happened to be, if the Cowboys were going to be uh, were going to be any good. Scott Nason, right now, after after three weeks in the NFL, where do you rank the Cowboys in the in the pantheon of the NFC East? Oh boy, in the pantheon of the NFC East, I do rank them ahead of the Giants. Uh, really? Barely, although the wow. Giants did get a big win on the road. I think Washington's a little better. I think Philadelphia's yeah, quite a bit better. I, I rank them third right now, wow. and I think they bounce back this week because the Lions have trouble against the run. And I mm-hmm. think Ezekiel Elliott is due for a big game, and the Lions are due to remember that they are in fact the Detroit Lions. So. I don't rank them very high in the NFC East, but I think that division is up for the taking. Uh, Philadelphia 2-1, and one, obviously the class, but it looks not great against Indianapolis. Carson Wentz first game back, uh, but I, I wouldn't count Dallas out just yet, but they're not exactly uh, turning heads at this point. Hey, Scott, Trey here. Do you believe that people are finally getting around to the fact that Dak Prescott is the most overrated player in the NFC East? And maybe all of football because well, I don't know about I don't know about all of football. But, some, but I, I think NFC East is there's something to be said about that. Uh, you know, having that big first season, obviously you had a better offensive line and, and running game at that point. He had a Prescott team built doesn't for quite have the receivers or the tight end that he once did, but I don't think a lot of people are rushing to pick him up on the fantasy football waiver mm-hmm. wire at this point. So yeah, I'd say in the division, as far as at least the, the profile positions, I, I would agree. I think. He is one of the more overrated players. Hey, Scott, Trey, still here. Who's the best quarterback in the NFC East? Because oh, right now there's a debate between Carson Wentz and Eli Manning. Boy, um, you know, Eli Manning has won two Super Bowls. Yes! And, you know, Scott Carson, Nathan, Carson ladies Wentz. and gentlemen! He's not Ooh! done. He's so, not so done. If you go along great quarterback, you know me, Paul. I like a guy that wins. I got to go Eli Manning. How can you pick a quarterback that's on his butt half the time? Well, that's wait, a, that's, wait, wait, what was that's, what, that's an what, offensive what was, line. Is that Dak or Eli? No, no Eli, Eli or Carson Wentz. 
Carson Wentz hasn't even won a Super Bowl is yet. There was... like, is there like some poison in the water in Sault Ste. Marie <laughs> that makes people <laughs> think that, Eli that, Manning that is 20 point. years younger than he is? Like, please, <laughs> come on. <laughs> See, this is the young guys. When you put me and Trey on the same side of an argument, which happens not that Very often, few. Th- yeah. th- like this is the one thing that me and Trey can like unite over. It's like our support Alex group. Smith might be better than Eli Manning right now. Alex Smith is definitively better than Eli I'm Manning. I'm putting it as a mic because Eli can actually throw the ball down the field. But Eli doesn't have an offensive First line. First play against Phil... Uh, uh, one Paul, play. Yeah. One play. Stop it, Mr. 5.4. See, Scott, Scott my, my life Paul right here. Paul Richardson... 40 One yards. One play. Touchdown. I just turned play the microphone off at Andrew, some point. I, when I play football, yeah, I'll have one play where I throw the ball down the field sometimes. Hey, and then you beat the Packers. <laughs> The All right. with one leg. Yes. Now, gentlemen, let me, let me wrap it up with this. I like to blame, and Eli's the guy that has the ring. There you go. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Carson wait, wait. has won. All right. You, we got to do it. We got, we got to do it. Limit. It's, Carson didn't win that. He, he was on the team. It's like saying Charlie Batch has two fo- Super Bowl rings. All right. <laughs> Eliminator picks. Here we go. Uh, JW says Eli is the, is the better quarterback. JW is the smartest man I know. He's also taking the Patriots this I week. I saw. already put it in. He's got the Patriots. So. I'm going to go last because I have I have kind of a show with mine. Oh, gee, I'm so surprised by that. Okay, uh, Andrew, Alex, Mr. I'm going to steal your girl. Packers, Aaron Rodgers, over the Bills, at home. The Bills won't do it twice in a row. Okay. You're rolling the dice again with Scott Nason. Uh, it's not rolling the dice. I want to take the Rams tonight, but I'm going to save them for another day. I like the Chargers at home against the Janine Garofalo. I mean, Jimmy Garofalo left San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> like the Chargers, big time in that one. And you and I are the only two that understand the Gar- the Janine Garofalo reference. Thank Absolutely. you, Scott. Uh, I'm going to steal Trey's thunder. Give me Philly. You <laughs> <laughs> Scott Nason, where can our listeners? Wait, wait, I know wait, you're. I know you're no, picking Philly. I have another thing to go with it. Oh Jesus! I'm finally picking them because they're Marcus Mariota has one arm. So, <laughs> Scott Nason, where can our listeners get more from you, sir? More sports at our sports show of a game. You can find it at thegamesportshow.podbean.com. I don't know what I'm taking more more joy in, the fact that the Lions won this week or that I stole Trey's Thunder. Scott, as always, man, thank you so much for doing this. We look forward to chatting with you again next week. Sounds great, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Tina Merritt joins us next on The Drive. ESPN Blacksburg. Excuse me, what are you saying? 93.1, 8